What's going on, everybody? YouTube, Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly technical talk video. Today is November 10th. It's Saturday morning. Uh, another good trading week here we had. Um, a lot going on geopolitically, a lot going on with the U.S. elections. We had the um, Republican Party hold on to the Senate with majority in the Senate while the Democratic Party took control of the House. Um, this is causing a little bit of uh, market reaction. We have gridlock. Basically, um, the House and Senate can kind of counter each other with majority votes, um, pushing things through and blocking things, stopping things from being pushed through and all. This this creates some gridlock in the economy and in the, in the uh, taxes that can be passed and pushed through and legislation that can happen. Um, the markets are taking this bullish, so we've seen a rally in the S&P 500. We've seen some risk on move across the board off of this news. Um, the market's kind of taking gridlock as a good thing as there's not going to be too much drastic change. It's going to force the parties to try to find common ground on some issues to get some things done. Historically in the U.S., when we've had uh, different majority parties in the House and Senate, we've had gridlock like this. We have gotten some big things passed. So this could be a good thing for the economy. Um, but we had overall a good trading week again this week. If you guys are new to these videos, I'm going to go ahead and dive into a full breakdown of the technical analysis of all the U.S. dollar crosses, each individual currency pair, the S&P 500, gold, oil. And then I'll dive into my watch list for this week, what exactly I'm watching, what setups I'm looking for, and how I want them to play out, as well as a little bit on the news and what's been going on and uh, what to look for this coming week ahead. All, right, all my returning viewers, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. As always, love you guys. Um, I hope you guys are all enjoying these videos. If you like what you see, throw a little like, throw a comment on there. Let me know one way or another how you feel about them. Uh, and subscribe to the page if you would like to see and be notified whenever these videos get released. I release them every weekend to get ready for the trading week ahead and recap the past trading week. All right, thank you guys. I'm going to go ahead now and dive into the charts, and I will catch you all in there. All right, guys, so starting here with the relative performance for this past week. As you can see, New Zealand dollar, Aussie dollar, pound were the top three performing currencies of this week. And we had the CAD, yen, euro as the bottom performers. Again, like I told you guys, we had that risk on move in the markets this week. Um, we had New Zealand, Aussie overperforming. These are our risk on currencies when we have risk on in the market, when there's a higher risk appetite for investors. You see money moving to higher risk, higher return assets. That is the Aussie New Zealand. And you see money leaving things like the Japanese yen, euro, Swiss franc, more of our safe haven risk off currencies. CAD's over here because oil had one of the worst weeks again in a long time, got crushed all week. That dragged CAD down pretty strong. Um, typically, CAD is one of the higher growth currencies as well. But as we know, in the Forex markets, there's so many different rolling correlations that <clears throat> whatever the strongest correlation at the time is, is what will influence price the most. And oil getting crushed is what dragged CAD down. But the rest, of the, the rest of this overall theme, you can see our risk on theme played out most of the week. Starting off here with the U.S. dollar pair. As you guys can see, the Dixie has still been making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. This week we set a higher low. Looked like we were potentially going to break this support here of 96, but price ended up closing above it. And then we had a Thursday, Friday rally off of it. <clears throat> we had the Fed meeting. They are still optimistic with another rate hike, so... <clears throat> That's caused some bullishness in the U.S. dollar, along with the um, you know geopolitical events going on that are bringing some risk on moves, some strength to the dollar, some more confidence um, in the U.S. economy. So we are continuing to see a strong dollar. We're going to watch this resistance here to see if we're able to break through to set a new higher high or to see if for a third time price can reject off this 97 um, resistance level here. Takes us over to the euro. As you can see, another one we are sitting on the third touch to support this time. This is the opposite as the um, Dixie. As you guys can see, we have been setting lower highs and lower lows with this pair. We were setting higher high, higher low, higher high. Price sold off pretty strong, broke all the way down below structure, broke this higher low to set a new lower low, pulled back, set a lower high, pushed all the way down lower to set another lower low, pulled back again to set a lower high and is now pushed back down again. So again, similar to the dollar, but with this pair, we're going to be looking for price to set a new lower low. Then maybe we can wait for a pullback, look to short, and then catch the next moves down. But all in all, um, our overall outlook of the euro is 
certainly still short. Yen sitting on very strong weekly support. Um, pretty much been moving down lower overall, <clears throat> even though it's been a little bit choppy, a little whipsaw. We came down, hit this support, rallied off, found resistance, based for a little while, and then sold off again. We're back down in this support zone. So similar to the euro, we're going to be watching to see if we're able to break this support, break this strong weekly level. If we do, we've got a pretty clear path down here to about 82. So I would expect to see some strong selling off in the yen if we break this support, but that's something we'll watch for. And overall weakness in the yen is certainly what we want to start the week with. <clears throat> Pound, very, very choppy pair um, currency. This is, it's been all over the board. Um, after we broke this trend line, we set a strong push lower, setting a new lower low all the way down here at prior support. Price rallied. We thought maybe we'd find resistance at this prior support level in this gray box here, but price actually just ripped right through it. Retested this broken trend line and sold off sharply from there back to this zone. So now we'll have to see what price is going to do. As you can see, we've got our moving averages just flip flopping. Um, no clear price direction. You know, we'd like to see things like this price moving from top left to bottom right or vice versa. However, this we've just been seeing choppiness um, and range bound movement here. So no too clear of direction for the pound, but we'll have to keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on Brexit headlines and see what's going on. Canadian dollar continues to sell off as we expected. Um, with these oil prices getting crushed, I could see more of a sell off continuing out of the CAD. We are on support right now. We could see price pull back a little bit and then shoot lower. Or price could just break through this support and continue. But we do have a nice clear path to 74 down here. So I'm certainly looking for more of a bearish CAD um, going into this trading week. So that's the setups we'll try to look for. Swiss franc still trading below this weekly support level we broke underneath. It pulled back to retest it and immediately sold off Wednesday, Thursday. Friday sat pretty neutral. Um, another one we're waiting to see if price is able to continue lower. If price is able to continue lower, we should get a pretty good sustained move to the downside. Australian dollar trend changing move we had last week. Um, price was following a beautiful trend line, beautiful lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, setting patterns, breakout patterns, just beautiful technical setups here. Um, and then we found bottom here at around 70.50, failed to break it once, failed to break it twice, gap tire, broke this trend line, broke the 50 SMA, broke structure, set a new structure, higher high up here, Sold off now. Um, we have our 20 about to cross over our 50 SMA. Price is trading above the SMAs, above the trend line, setting new structure highs. I'm looking for longs now on the Aussie. Just looking for the right opportunity to get long. Um, I like getting long off pullbacks like this, so we'll see if we're able to pull back a little more and then try to catch long Aussie again this week. Aussie was strong this week, Thursday, Friday. It did sell off. We had some bad numbers out of China, um, which sent a little bit of a risky feeling for especially Australia. There's a lot of business with China. They're very intertwined economies. So um, Chinese news really affects Australia. So we did see some sell off here, but I think especially if we see a continued rally in the stock markets and that risk on theme moves into this week, I think Aussie dollar longs could be a great opportunity. Takes us over to New Zealand. As you guys can see here, this is the New Zealand weekly chart. Price was in this strong downtrend has now rallied. It's coming up to this very strong resistance here. As you can see, we're starting to get initial rejections. But on the daily, it looks a lot more clean of a trend reversal. You know, we've been in this lower lows, lower highs, similar to the Aussie. You can picture a trend line being here. Price broke it with this strong bullish momentum push higher. You can see we are rejection, rejecting this zone here at 68. Price initially has rejected off it. We'll see if it's strong enough to push price down and uh, you know continue selling off or if we're able to break above this. If we are... I would love to see a break, pullback retest, get in long and ride it up to 70, 72, something like that. But uh, a little bit tougher with the New Zealand dollar, but I'm definitely still bullish on this pair, especially if we get the fundamental backing support with that risk on theme next week. So this takes us over to our US dollar pairs. As you can see, the euro dollar has been setting lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. This was a lower high here as well. Thought we could have been getting a strong double bottom bounce off this weekly support here. But in fact, we did not. Price started to break. Prior structure reacted, rejected it as resistance. And price has now sold back off down to this lower low. Similar to the euro and the dollar, which are the two pairs traded in this pair trade. Um, we are waiting to see if this support breaks, right? 
We're going to wait and see if price maybe rallies, breaks this trend line, then it could show it's, it's bouncing off this weekly level. Or we could see price break below and maybe try to catch that retest before it falls off and continues to the downside. Pound dollar, another one just like the pound chart we just looked at, not very clear direction. Um, we've just been chopping around in here, strong moves up, strong moves down, strong moves up, strong moves down, strong moves up. So we really just want to wait for better direction. I've got these two weekly levels marked on here. That's the range, the main range we've been trading between. I would like to see one of the breaks of those before I have any too clear of direction. But um, pound dollar, yeah, that, that's a pretty volatile pair. So we'll be keeping an eye on it. Dollar CAD, uh, I like this pair a lot. We've broken this trend line. We've been seeing some bullishness, bullish momentum, higher highs, higher lows forming here. Prices above the three moving averages, we've got the 20, the 50, 200, all in perfect placement. So technically, we're in a nice uptrend now. We'd like to see price maybe make a little higher of a push and then pull back and then catch some long opportunities and catch that next push higher. Might just pull back right off the bat and then we'll look for long opportunities. But either way, we're looking for a corrective move to then get long on this pair. Dollar yen, similar story. Uh, after we broke above here, price went on a pretty strong bull run. Setting a higher high from the prior structure and, and um, range we were trading in. So now we want to see a pullback, look for a higher low, look for price to find support, and try to catch that next move higher. So another one, we're looking for more of a correction to catch a long trade. Dollar Swiss franc still trading up above this strong dollar parity level. Um, as you guys can see, we broke above it and then failed to break back below it multiple times. So it looks like price is holding strong above this level. Looks like um, longs are potentially the play here. However, I would certainly be waiting for some kind of a break above here to then pull back and try to catch that retest play, break retest, boom, catch that next move. So um, nothing immediately going on here, but another one we're looking for price action to show us what it's doing. Price to break out, pull back, and then get long on it. Aussie dollar, I like this pair going into this week. I like looking for um, long opportunities on it. As you guys can see, we got a couple levels. We got this level in here to watch price find support off of and look for longs. And we've got this level down here to do the same, right? So um, really, we just want to wait and see price play out. We had a new structure changing higher high, broke this trend line, broke this structure lower lows, double bottomed off this support here broke the neckline, pushed higher. Now it hit resistance and is pulling back a little as we know the market moves in waves and corrections. So this is just a corrective move. We wanna wait for this corrective move to show us some support has been found, some momentum coming back and then try to catch that long next push higher, maybe up to this weekly level up here in blue. So I'll certainly be watching for long opportunities here on this Aussie dollar. Just need to find the right opportunity to get in. New Zealand dollar, very similar story. Um, as you can see, we were just like the Aussie in a nice downtrend, setting lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Found a little bit of an inverted head and shoulders, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, here off support on the weekly, and price bounced off of it. It set a new structure changing higher high. Price is now pulling back. We're going to look for long opportunities after this corrective move to catch that next push to the upside. Alrighty, so that takes us over to my watch list now for this week and the exact pairs that I will be keeping my eye on to see what trade setups um, I'll be trying to take advantage of. As you can see here, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, another one with this New Zealand dollar has changed tr changed the trend. We were in a downtrend. However, we did find support. I was calling on a strong bullish bounce off this support with this fourth rejection here, and we have gotten that completely. Um... As you guys can see, we broke this trend line, we broke this resistance, we broke the SMAs, we made a very strong bullish push. Now I'm waiting for a corrective move. I don't want just one bearish day correction after this strong of a move. I would like to see more of a drastic sell off. If you guys throw Fibonacci onto this strong move, you can see 382 would fall right on this line down here. That'd be a nice place I'd like to look for a long. So this might be more of a next week trade, not this coming week. But um, all in all, I am looking for long opportunities for sure. This is a strong weekly level, so we could just have a pull back to here, bounce around a little, and then catch it long. So I will be watching for that. But um, typically with strong bullish explosion moves like that, I like to see a little bit better and stronger of a correction so that we know there's more buying power coming in when price does get ready to move higher. Aussie dollar, yen, similar story, pretty similar setup. 
So we broke all structure, broke the SMAs, broke the trend line, um, broke the 200 SMA even. 20 is crossing above the 50 now, and price has set new higher high, structure changing. So looking for a little bit of a pullback before we catch that next move higher. So now we're looking for long opportunities after a corrective move. Pound Aussie, that's a trade I'll go over in the webinar next with our signal room that we caught this week. Um, we got Pound CAD here. This is a different kind of trade. This is a range bound trade. This is a uh, support resistance trade. So similar to that New Zealand yen long off that support that I called out. Um, I'm seeing the similar kind of setup here in the pound CAD. So we're tra trading in this massive range, right? Um, this is weekly resistance, weekly support. And as you can see, every time prices come up to the zone, it is reacted to it, whether it's support and long, support, long, support, long. Or if it breaks, acts as resistance, shorts, resistance, 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 resistance. Now we're back here. And um, it doesn't look like price is going to be breaking through this level. It looks like price is rejecting it. So on the hourly, you can see we've got a trend line rejection. We've got a rounding top pattern here. Price has just broken the um, support level of this pattern. So I would expect to see this move, this pair move to the downside. If you like range bound trades and support resistance trades, that is a decent setup for you there. Um, that takes us on to Euro New Zealand. This one and a few of the next trades pairs I'll be looking at are all similar setups, right? We have had very strong bearish momentum, very strong trend changing moves and blown through support, um, blown through SMAs, everything. So we are waiting now for a little bit of a relief, a little bit of a rally, a little bit of a recovery to try to catch the next moves lower and try to catch these next uh, sell offs. So we're just sitting back and waiting now. Euro New Zealand, Euro Aussie, we want to wait for these prices to rally, wait for there to be a little bit of a recovery before we catch the next move. Um, Aussie New Zealand, we caught this last sell-off. We have now made another lower low. We want to wait for a rally and try to catch the next sell-off off that rally. So we have set a lower low. Now we want to wait for price to set a lower high and look for our shorts. We've got Aussie Swiss Franc, another one. Strong, strong bullish move. We have hit this 200 SMA. Also a strong level, strong bearish and golf and close on Friday. I definitely expecting this pair to sell off to start this week. Then we want to look forward to find support and try to catch that next long um, buy opportunity in the direction of the trend. Aussie CAD, similar story. Broke trend line, broke structure, broke SMAs, set a new higher high. Now we want to wait for price to pull back. Right, We are seeing a uh, decent zone prices hitting, as you can see here. Um, However, we, we can't really call one way or another until we get price um, showing us what we want to see. And that's a re recover, a rally, I mean a uh, correction here off of this resistance zone. Get a corrective move and then try to catch that long opportunity for the next phase higher. New Zealand CAD, similar story, right? Similar story across the boards with these pairs. We had a higher high set here, price pushed higher, hitting 200 SMA. Hitting a supply zone if I was to draw the box here. Want to wait for price to sell off. Look for support to be found and then catch that next move higher. New Zealand Swiss, exact same thing. A little bit more bullishness in this one. We've had a lot more selling off of the Swiss franc. And I like to see the Swiss franc continue to sell off. So this is another pair I like um, for a corrective move to then look for a long opportunity. And CAD Swiss franc. This is one I told you guys was in a bull pennant. We have now broken out to the downside of the pennant. Um, so as you can see, price is broken lower, broke the 200 SMA on the four hour, broke the trend line, broke the prior support here. Um, and now we could see an opportunity for short selling this, uh, break out of this pattern. I was looking for more so a break to the upside, <clears throat> but it did break to the downside. So if you are a big time pattern trader, this could be a trade you could be looking for. All right, guys. And last but not least, we've got the, um, S and P 500 here. This is where you can see the rally we had this week. Right, so we had this strong bullish push higher, gapped up here with the election results, continued to push higher. Did sell off a little bit Thursday and Friday, but we're back above the 50, I mean the 200 SMA. We're back above, you know, a strong sell off area. So I think we could see this price now push higher and potentially get back above this trend line and back up into um, bullish territory here. Gold, as we had a rally in the risk in the equity markets, we had a sell off in the gold market. Um, not too bad of one. We started a little bit sluggish and actually ended up selling off on Friday more so than anything. We're back down to 50 SMA, back down to support. We could see if price is continuing this trend reversal type move. So we had this push, pullback, push, pullback. <laughs> Excuse me. 
now we could be looking to see if we get that next push. And that could be the play in gold. Or if you are a little bit more optimistic on the economy like I am, you could be waiting for a price to get back below this level and then look for short opportunities to continue to the downside here with gold. And that takes us over to oil. As you can see here, this strong sell-off, very, very, very strong sell-off. Sold off about $16 a barrel in the past month. Um, all of October was a terrible month for oil, and November's opened up just as bad. We're coming up to a weekly trend line here in this blue. Uh, we could see a little bit of a bounce. We're at a strong demand level looking left here too as well. Um, after this exhaustive move, I do think a rally's in play here for oil. But with all of the producing that we have going on right now out of the U.S., out of Russia, out of Saudi Arabia, we are having a little bit of an oversupply going on. Um, I know a lot of the uh, major mainstream economic financial market news channels are calling for weak oil, oil hitting $50, $40 a barrel. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. But as you can see technically on the charts, we are definitely in a strong downtrend now. Um, moving averages are all rolled over. And looks like um, as price continues to move, these will straighten out to the proper order, 20, 50, 200 with the right spacing. Right now, price is just falling like a rock. So you see all these moving averages just sloping downward. But um, that'll do it for this week, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Broke down a lot of technical analysis here. Um, flipping over to Forex Factory real quick. This coming up week, you guys can see, we've got pretty loaded news week. Starting Monday, we just have some business confidence out of Australia. Average earnings and unemployment out of the pound. Average earnings out of Australia. Preliminary GDP out of Japan. We got CPI out of um, the pound. CPI out of the U.S., Fed Powell speaking out of the U.S., unemployment rates out of the Aussie, retail sales out of the U out of the pound, retail sales out of the U.S., Powell speaking again, um, and then we have ECB Jockey speaking on Friday. So pretty loaded week, pretty loaded middle of the week. We've got a slow beginning and a slow end. So Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday should be great trading days this week. Um, so make sure you have to keep an eye on these events, what's going on, and you know when you're in trades, what events are happening so you don't get... Um, fundamental news messing up your trades um, but that'll do it for this video guys I really appreciate it I hope you guys enjoy what you're seeing check out the links below if you're interested in trying out the core FX signal room we got a one week free trial been averaging 1500 pips a month also have a link down there to the core FX full training program I have a full course teaching you how to trade from the bottoms up I've traded with multiple prop trading firms I've done professional analysis with t3 trading um, investing.com I've got a lot of experience in the industry and I've built a course from the ground up. I've realized that there's not enough courses out there that provide all you need to learn in one spot that aren't thousands of dollars. So um, that's what I tried to come up with. I've gotten great feedback, lots of testimonials I can have you check out from my students. Um, if you want to check the course out, just feel free to reach out. Let me know. Check the links below. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. I will catch you all in the next video next week. Hope you guys have a great trading week and I'll see you later.